welcome to the Gonzales Group, purveyors of food at the proper time. Food for thought. And by the SSS, the Spiritual Snitching Society. We are a new type of society. We do everything in the open. Welcome to the Gonzalez Group, where we discuss topics that you will never hear at the Kingdom Hall. This is not your ordinary watchtower study. Why? Because I am J.W. Crisis, the Jehovah's Witness Elder you wish you had when you were growing up in the Kingdom Hall. Today, our panel of distinguished guests are Neil, the great apostate, coming live from the People's Republic of Ireland. And Eric, son of thunder, coming from us from lightning capital of the USA, sunny South Florida. We also have Mr. Jeffrey Jackson, governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. And last but not least, we have a Jehovah's Witness elder with 40 years of experience, and he's on the down low, Matthew Mark. Matthew Mark has been a Jehovah's Witness for over 40 years and has served decades as school overseer in the now defunct Theocratic Ministry School. He has also served decades in the now defunct and obsolete RBC. He proudly states that in over 40 years of service, he never, and I mean never, served in the capacity of pioneer. Now, let's begin. Question number one. Can you be a true Christian and be politically active? What say you, Neil? Hi, Gilbert. Thanks very much for having me on your show. I was tempted to call this the What's Eating Gilbert Gonzalez show, but we'll stick with the Gonzalez group. Uh, can a person be a true Christian and can they vote? And can they get involved in politics? Can And would God hold them responsible if they vote wrongly? Um, first of all, I think people should get out of the idea of deciding what is and isn't a true Christian. It's not your or my responsibility to decide that. Uh, people can be uh, true Christians if they feel they're true Christians, and that may well not be the case. Uh, I'm sure that the uh, the Church of Fred Phelps thoroughly believes they're true Christians, and uh, if they say, if you told me that they're not politically active with what they do, uh, I think that would be foolish. Okay, can you vote? Yeah, of course you can vote. Of course you can. There's loads of different issues which are very, very important to all our societies and lives. Uh, when Jesus said, my kingdom is no part of the world, he was talking about uh, a dictatorial you know, uh, regime of the Romans and the Jews and uh, you know, that was in place through Herod. And I don't think he was discussing, because it didn't uh, exist in his time, it existed before but not during, um, a representative democracy. Uh, in fact, that really didn't exist at all either. Uh, I think that it's entirely fair to say that you have to stand up for your rights, you have to stand up for the rights of other people. If you think about the benefits that have come about through the voting and through political agitation and activity, uh, votes for women, we have had uh, child labour laws, we have working laws, we have all kinds of you know health and safety, environmental laws. Are you telling me that God wouldn't find those uh, appealing? I think, I think not. And I think that any religion which doesn't uh, lift its load and help out is uh, a very cowardly one indeed. So that's my opinion. Yes, absolutely. Get involved in politics, get involved in uh, your local government, uh, which leads us to number two. And I don't want to run out of time. You told me you'd cut me off. Uh, can you, will you be held responsible for your votes? Uh, you'll be responsible for your votes, yeah. Uh, and you'll be responsible for the people you vote in. That sucks, you know. Uh, after World War I, the German people were suffering immensely. And uh, a man came along who took his opportunity, who took the right time, and who said, it's all the Jews' fault. It's all business fault. And uh, he was voted in with, I think, something crazy, a, leg a legitimately crazy amount of votes. Something like 95 or 98 percent of the public voted for him. Uh, and that was Hitler. Now, those people have to live with what they did. They voted for Hitler. Imagine saying, yeah, I voted for Hitler. But you did live with it. Uh, will you God hold you responsible? Of course not. Of course not. You know, I mean, those people didn't know. They didn't know what was going to happen. All they knew was that they were suffering and that they, he had the solution, apparently. Uh, so, will God hold you responsible? 
No. Well, uh, can you vote? Yes, I think you can. Thank you very much. Okay. What say you, Eric? Yes, I, I believe you can. I think we have examples in the Bible where many of the prophets were involved with the kings of their day. There was the army officer. Jesus never told him to leave the army. And uh, also the fundamental Christian principle of caring for your neighbor. We have certain inalienable rights and certain politicians and leaders want to take those rights away. So if we love our neighbor, we will help fight to keep those rights as long as we can. Uh, there's a B part to this question, and will Jesus hold you responsible if you voted for the wrong candidate? No, I, I don't think he would hold us responsible. He's our creator, and he knows we're made of dust. So I don't think that he would be that insane. There's a, also a lot of dishonesty in politics. So sometimes we could make a wrong decision, but based on falsified facts. So that would be another reason why I don't believe Jesus would hold us responsible for picking the wrong candidate. As long as we have a good heart and we're picking them because we think this will be the best for our neighbors and the people in general. I see. Matthew Mark. Well, thank you, Gilbert. Let me just start by saying this. In the webpage MassResistance.org, there's an article that says what really happened in Ireland's gay marriage election. It says the argument is made that the LGBT lobby group simply outsmarted the religious base and successfully implemented its progressive agenda. They laid the groundwork which resulted in a long string of incremental parliamentary success. They created a sophisticated propaganda campaign. They shipped thousands of acti activists into key voting areas to canvass notice door to door. Jehovah's Witnesses went door to door as well and came back empty handed. Let's compare this article to the words of Anthony Morris. Many people today find the idea of being controlled by anyone to be distasteful. I think you'd agree many in the world have this attitude. Nobody tells me what to do. Well, we have news forum in Ephesians chapter 2. Whether they'll admit it or not, here's the facts. They all say they're thinking for themselves. I don't know if you know the news, but my wife has a lot of Irish content. <laughs> and she's a bit upset when I broke it to her that in Ireland, first country, uh, to have a popular vote approving same-sex marriage. So her Irish was coming up out of her there a bit. <laughs> so the fact is they all come up with how independent they are and they think for themselves. Well, here's the facts. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Furthermore, God made you alive, though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you at one time, see, like the world is as now, but we're, we're away from it, walked according to the system of things of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So that's the facts. They can make all the claims that they wish. They're under the control and the authority of the ruler of the world. And that is so evident Things have changed so dramatically in just the past few years. Some of the things happening globally, they would not have happened 10, 15 years ago. But here before our eyes, the very thing that uh, Jehovah foretold through the scriptures, we're in the middle of it, right in the middle of it. So we're feeling what it's like to have lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, the Irish are under the control of the ruler of the world? And yet Watchtower lifts no finger to counter the campaign of same-sex marriage. They print and distribute magazines in Ireland about some bird in the Amazon forest and not a word about the institution of marriage. And the LGBT community goes door to door and successfully convinces the populace of its progressive agenda. They lend no support to the Christian groups fighting same-sex marriage. Anthony Morris said, Many people today find the idea of not 
of being controlled by anyone to be distasteful. Yet they, Jehovah's Witnesses, are not allowed to vote and spread skepticism of the voting process among their friends and families. And after the votes are counted, the leaders of this religious group condemns the Irish as being under the influence of Satan and living in Sodom and Gomorrah. So you can argue that Anthony Morris and company are partly responsible for the referendum on gay marriage in Ireland. Their silence was a contribution to the LGBT lobby. Jesus spoke of the man who hid his talent in the ground out of fear. Jehovah's Witnesses are afraid of politics, and when they meet Jesus, they will have nothing to offer in return for the talent given. Mr. Jackson. Absolutely not. True Christians must not get involved in politics. Just like the first century Christians, neutrality is an identifier of true Christians. An identifier... Really? Okay. Question two. Some say Watchtower is going down in our lifetime. Others say, no way. They have too much money. They will just reorganize. What say you, Eric? That is absurd. Too much money. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, wait your turn. You may be governing body in New York City. But here in the Gonzalez group, I preside. Eric? Well, Gilbert, I, uh, I'm i in the camp that believes that there's... I think their time is limited, and they're actually on borrowed time, and I don't think they have much time left. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, if you can't convince people that you are the truth, and the further away 1914 gets... Uh, that doctrine is going to continue to be more and more difficult to explain. So, yes, I, I believe that um, they don't have much longer to go, and I think we're going to see their demise. What say you, Neil? It's a great, this is a great question, isn't it? Will the Watchtower Society die in our lifetime? We'd all love to think it would, uh, but I, I don't think it will. And I'll tell you what, I don't think it's anything to do with the money. I don't... I think it's to do with that old saying about you can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. I think that that's really the major issue here, that you will always find people attracted to the most bizarre uh, cults and, you know, weird little offshoots of whatever. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a crazy club that, you know, you support. If you really like a football team, you'll find there's crazier supporters. If you uh, support a political organization, you'll find that they have a, a far right that's just terrifying or a far left that is embarrassing. That, uh, and that's the case. I know in, uh, I don't wanna go back on to the political issue, but if you look into the British Labour Party, the British Labour Party had in the 1970s a very vociferous group of supporters who wanted to legalize paedophilia. Now, we can all look at that and go, what? How's that sensible? But throughout the 1970s, uh, people who then went on to become senior mem members of the British government had had a history of supporting the paedophile information exchange. And it's hard to believe you in America have NAMBLA. People will support what they support and we're stuck with that. Uh, so will the Jehovah's Witnesses die? No, I don't see that. I see them, uh, I see them losing numbers massively in the West in areas where families aren't so integrated. Uh, you mentioned in one of your own videos in the past, or it wasn't you, sorry, uh, it was uh, I think Ricky Gonzalez mentioned that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses love the big family thing of the Latin, the Latin community. And I can see that because once you get the, the family, then all the kids, everyone's stuck together because they don't want to lose their family. I, I see the Jehovah's Witnesses dying out in the West uh, to a very large extent. I see them pushing and pushing into uh, foreign lands and uh, doing that. And I do see them having sort of romp headquarters, which will end up being more isolated with less and less members. But unfortunately, there's always going to be dumb people and there's always going to be fooled people. And how do I know that? Because I was a dumb, fooled person. You were a dumb, fooled person. And uh, But, you know, time changes us. Time makes fools of us all. And also sometimes it gets us out of it. And we're all out now. And hopefully in the future, more and more people will be. And the more people that are out the more difficult it will be to keep members in because uh, current members will just be bombarded with more and more uh, people in their family saying, hey, you know, this is a cult. You, you shouldn't be involved in this. And let's hope that works. Uh, in our lifetime, 
I don't see it, guys. I don't see it. Uh, but hope springs eternal. Impressive. What say you, Mr. Jackson? Sure, we have money, but we are good stewards of the monies we receive. We will continue to preach the good news until Jehovah brings the great tribulation. The only one that is going down is GG for GB. Maybe next week we should ask why there are no financial statements and disclosures. Matthew Mark. Yes, it will survive, it will thrive, and it will reorganize. Watchtower will always be around. It is religious reincarnation. As long as Jesus is worshipped, Watchtower will be there to oppose it. Reincarnation, huh? Are you Hindu? Question three. If you leave the JWs, is it necessary to get baptized again? But this time in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is your Jehovah's Witness baptism invalid? What say you, Neil? Is it necessary to get baptized again? Well, I don't think I've ever said this before in any of my videos uh, or told it on any forums, but when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses, I uh, flirted with loads of churches. Uh, one of the first things I did was I started uh, seeing the Mormons uh, because, you know, they felt a bit similar, felt a bit homely. And at the time, my mum and dad weren't having a great deal to do with me, I'm sad. Uh, so I did, I flirted with the Mormons. Uh, ultimately, I remember after a bunch of studies that I said to myself, you know, Neil, you're being a hypocrite if you don't uh, subject them to the same uh, rigorous standards that you subjected your own church to. Of course I did. And say no more, I discovered their rubbish too. Uh, that doesn't end it there though, because what I then went on to do is I started going to evangelical churches and then I met my girlfriend, fiance, now wife, Linda, and uh, I ended up uh, going to a Presbyterian church where I made good friends with the minister and discussed a lot of stuff religiously. I was very, very religious at the time and I'm still very interested in religion, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an agnostic now. I'm not sure what I believe in and I'm not sure if there's a God to believe in. Uh, no offense if, uh, if you do though, I'm fine with that. Uh, but anyway, do you uh, need to get rebaptized? Well, I did get rebaptized. I, I didn't get a full immersion, though. I just got a little bit of water on my bald head uh, in the, in, uh, where was it? Uh, oh, a Presbyterian church in Bangor. I forget. It's the same one we got married in. Uh, oh, no, it's not going to come. Anyway, we got I got rebaptized. Um, I felt that it was a good thing to do. I felt that it was the right thing to do uh, because, in general, I don't think that... Uh, we all know Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult. It's a cult, guys, okay? And uh, I think that's the most important thing to try to show people. Uh, so if you are a genuine Christian, if you really feel it, then uh, I can't imagine that uh, God would be satisfied and that you would be satisfied with the, uh, the declaration of faith that you had made to a man-made organization that uh, only wants your money and your time and your life. So if you believe uh, that you should be baptized, then by all means, go get rebaptized. Uh, just be careful what church you get baptized into. Uh, we don't want any more Scientologists. All right, thanks. Good points. What say you, Eric? Well, necessary according to who? Gilbert, I think that um, God is not legalistic like men want to portray him. Um, I don't think that the way they baptize people is honorable to God. And uh, I personally would like to get baptized again, but by the truth, by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, like the scriptures say, and not by spirit-directed organization. But I don't think it's necessary in the eyes of God, but I think it's uh, if it's something you want to do, I think you ought to do it. And I think that God would appreciate your faith in that respect. True, true. Mr. Jackson. You must be baptized by God's Spirit-directed organization here on Earth. Just like in the days of Noah, you must be part of the modern-day Noah's Ark. And you must be working in the Spirit-directed projects that God had before the Flood in order to enter the Ark. So, too, you must work alongside the spiritual modern-day Noah's Ark so as to be qualified to enter as the rain falls. Is it just me? Is it just me? Matthew Mark. 
Fighting Jesus is one thing, but dropping the Holy Spirit? Come on, Watchtower. Yeah, I say get rebaptized like Matthew 28.19 says. I agree. Last question. Does the GG for GB campaign have a realistic chance? And is this an effective form of activism? Eric, what are your thoughts? Yes, absolutely. Is this an effective form of activism? Of course it is. I think whatever your heart leads you to do as far as activism is a valid form of activism. I think staying quiet is not an effective form of activism and I feel that anyone who tries to label which type of activism is good or bad is uh, doing a disservice to everyone and possibly discouraging some very effective forms of activism. Excellent observations. Neil, knock it out of the park. Okay, this is my feeling on campaigns. Um, I think all campaigns are worthwhile. Uh, every bit of uh, effort that people do, however, even mine, however small, uh, people like JW Struggle and Eric, his fantastic work. I found a YouTuber recently uh, who I'm going to do a video about, and holy crap, I think his name's Susan Gatskin Fusco, and uh, she does videos on YouTube that make mine look like I'm an ape with boxing gloves on. It is brutal, and she does a fantastic job. So I think every form of of uh, of campaign and evangelism works uh, in its own way but I'm going to be honest and this is the one I'm most passionate about okay and I'm not the best exponent of it but I try uh, I think the best thing to do is humor comedy make fun of the cult okay why do you make fun of the cult because first of all it's fucking hilarious right it is it's really funny and we've all lost people we all have people that we can't get and we can't see and we'll maybe never see again and that's horrible but at the end of the day, it's like a disease. The Jehovah's Witnesses are like a disease. The most important thing that you do first, whilst you try to find a cure, and in our case, the cure is getting people out, the most important thing you do is you isolate the diseased so that they don't spread the disease, okay? How do you think the Scientologists went from being an up-and-coming, up-and-comingly huge, you know, cult to having something estimated between 30 and 45,000 members, which is pitiful? How, how did they do that? They're still wealthy beyond belief, but they're next to nothing in importance. How did they do that? We, they didn't do that by explaining to people with science and technological arguments why Zeno didn't drop people in volcanoes. They did it because Tom Cruise jumped up on a couch and said, I love Katie Holmes! That's how they did it. They did it because uh, people mocked it, because South Park destroyed them, because Everybody, because the books that came out inside Scientology, because when you looked at it, you just couldn't help but see the, the ridiculous, the farce of it all. And that's how you do Jehovah's Witnesses. When you've got an inoculated group of people by the millions surrounding the Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll be left with this tiny group inside. And how much easier is it to get them outside when they're constantly being bombarded, not with hate, but with humour? Okay, not hate, but humor. Laugh at it. Okay, we none of us, and I, I none of us could would would be prepared to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses until we were ready to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses. I wasn't. You could have given me back when I was a pioneer. You could have given me those apostate books, oh Raymond Franz, and I'd have thrown them in the bin in front of you and reported on you to the elders. But when I was ready, something got me out, and it was the apostate books, and I was so glad about it in my case. But humor will get people ready to read them. Humor is what will do it. And it's what I try to do. And I hope you do too. Three minutes. Grand slam, Neil. Matthew Mark. No chance in Hades. To quote Cool Hand Luke. Yeah, it will give him something to do, I guess. The effectiveness will be answered when they respond to your campaign. He is the insurgent candidate that is GG for GB. And Watchtower, why they are the establishment. Matthew, is this an effective form of uh, activism? Well, seeing Jehovah's Witnesses disobey Jesus so much, should we pray for Anthony Morris III or harass him like the dog he is? Pray or pray on Anthony Morris III. That's what I say. If you keep giving me answers like that, Matthew Mark, you're not going to be invited back to the program. Just kidding. Mr. Jeffrey Jackson. I have to agree with Matthew Mark. There's no chance in Hades. 
or Anna, or Sheila. <laughs> you see, the governing body members are not elected. They are appointed by God's Spirit-directed organization. GG for GB is sinning against Holy Spirit. The board of directors and shareholders, why, they would never accept him. He does not have the decades and decades of full-time service, and that disqualifies him. True, he is the only YouTuber that is not disfellowshipped. But we are working on that. Plus, he is not qualified because he has not reported his monthly activity in over a decade. Also, his sarcasm does not make him qualified to be a minister. He has also disqualified himself by forming his own church slash congregation, the Nokeka Church, the National Organization of Congregations Against Cult Abuse. You cannot be a Jehovah's Witness and be a member of two churches at the same time. Is that a threat or a promise? Too late. We're out of time. I would like to thank my guests, Neil, the great, the great apostate, Eric, Son of Thunder, Matthew Mark, and Mr. Jeffrey Jackson for joining me in this roundtable discussion. Remember, if the freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. George Washington. Join us next week when we will answer the following questions. Christmas, is it a conscience matter? Is it proper? Does the date really matter? Your thoughts. No sex before marriage. But is it okay to go to third base? Does Minister Nation pause? What? Oh, hold on. Oh, does, does masturbation cause blindness? Will Sophia, will Sophia's friend Susie fall in love with Caleb? And will Caleb go to third base and get DF'd? These and many more questions on the next Gonzalez Group. All right. Those are my responses. I'm Son of Thunder. Keep and watch for you. GG for GB 2016. We can do this. Gilbert Gonzalez for Governing Body 2016. Making our religion great again. Hi, I'm Son of Thunder, and I'm endorsing GG for GB 2016. I approve this message. Welcome to the Gonzalez Group, purveyors of food at the proper time. Food for thought. Thank you.